Well, hello there, everyone. Bobby D here with Inspire Hearts Fundraising, Call to Auctions, Star Benefit Auctions, and your favorite fundraising podcast, Heart of the Gala. Anyways, I was on Facebook the other day, and I follow a whole bunch of different nonprofit and fundraising uh, Facebook groups. And in this particular one, our friends at the thriving nonprofit, 51,000 members, uh, there's a question to uh, the, the, that needs some answering. Just checking to make sure I'm not overstepping here. I'm the ED. I'm in the process of hiring an auctioneer for our upcoming gala. Board members strongly encouraged me not to hire an auctioneer unless they are willing to donate their services. Unless I'm missing something, these decisions are not within their domain as board members. Thoughts? Yes, I have so many thoughts on this. And yes, your board members can provide input into the hiring process. However, uh, as the executive director, this is your job to identify individuals that are able to help you exceed your goals in fundraising. And now you have a board that is coming from a scarcity mindset. And with the scarcity mindset is old school nonprofit thinking. It's like, we have to get everything for free. We're a poor nonprofit and we have to get everything for free. That is no longer the case. Just because you're a nonprofit doesn't mean that you're not in business to actually make a profit. The profit you're making is impact, and nonprofit is just a tax status. So for you to attract and acquire and retain the best fundraising talent, no matter it's an auctioneer, a development director, major gifts officer, executive director, whatever it might be, you want to be able to invest and see a huge ROI on whoever that individual is and make sure it's a win-win situation, a win for you as the organization to make sure that you're getting a top-notch professional that is experienced, that knows how to do their job very, very well. And you have to find that high, 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 high ROI from that. Now, uh, if you were going to hire anybody else in fundraising to be able to be a part of your fundraising team, you're going to look at that ROI. You're going to look at the value that they're able to bring to the plate, to the table, to help you with your fundraising, whether it's year-round fundraising, whether it's strategic sponsorship fundraising, major donor fundraising, whatever it might be, you want to find the best talent. And in order to find the best talent, you're going to have to make a significant investment because there's only so many professionals that are out there in the world. And as professionals, we get to decide who we get to work with. We get to decide where we get to apply our energies and our skills. And in my case, I want to work with nonprofits that have a great outlook. They're willing to change. They're willing to grow. They're willing to invest to really help their organization's impact be bigger and broader. I mean, it's all about throwing the little pebble into the pond and let the ripples go out or throwing the giant boulder in and big waves are going out. It's like, how big a rock do you want to throw into your fundraising pond? So answer that question. Board members, get out. Yes, they're going to ask you to find the free one, but it's going to be really come down to you get what you pay for. And I have conversations with nonprofits all that I've been having conversations with them for 20 plus years where I hear the nightmare auctioneer story, whether it's like, oh, my gosh, we had the funny uncle. Oh, my gosh, we had this celebrity. Oh, my gosh, we had this person that is on the board or off the board or wherever they might be that saw Storage Wars or one of the classic car auctions on TV. And they're like, I can do that. And then maybe they watch a couple of YouTube videos and they're like, oh, all right. But what ends up happening, it is that auctioneer nightmare where the audience is truly, truly trapped in your ballroom and can't leave. I mean, well, a lot of them will try to leave, but they're trapped in there with this really cringe, icky feeling of someone that doesn't know what the hell they're doing. And when they don't know what the hell they're doing, then everyone in the audience starts to become uneasy and becomes a little unsettled. And when a audience is kind of like that, they're not being philanthropic. They're not being giving. They're not generous uh, within their contributions. They're really closed off and kind of like, oh, please make this end. This is horrible. You know what I'm talking about because you've been there. And you felt it. We like to call this the record scratch. And a lot of times you'll have the free auctioneer that's up there. And all of a sudden they say something and it's like, "Eh!" like, did they just say that? Yeah. A lot of times they did say that. So 
soapbox me on it gonna preach this just a little bit if you want to keep watching we're going to talk some more about these great comments that are here because there was a lot of people uh that really commented on this almost a hundred comments um that were there now there are talking about budgets and there's all types of different budgets of auctioneers uh, that are up there. There's some that are thousands. There's some that are tens of thousands and everywhere in between. And you have to ask yourself, it's like, what is our budget? What do we want to raise? And what type of talent do we want to try to acquire within that? If you're looking for the best of the best of the best, they're going to be at the top of the market. I'm very proud to be at the top of the market because I love working with organizations that see that they value that they really, really, really want to push the envelope. And those that I get to work with are able to help us with that. Uh, board overreach. Yep. Talked about that. They don't need to be involved with that. Uh, finding that absolute uh, top-notch auctioneer, um, my buddy Randy Peterson in Tucson has been an auctioneer and he knows the difference. He's like, I don't like doing this because he knows that there's a lot of money that's being left on the table. I mean, he's a great you know, performer and impromptu comedian. Um, however, there's a very special skill when it comes to fundraising auctions and paddle races. So that's one element that's, uh, that's a part of that. And then... So many people, we invested in one, will never go back. Professional auctioneer will increase your donations three or fourfold if they are good and pay for themselves. That's what it's all about. ROI, zero net cost at the end of the day. If I charge you $10,000 and I don't make you an extra fifty dollars or $100,000, I'm not doing my job. Uh, does budget allow, spend money on fundraising events? You should be spending money on fundraising events because you have a hall, you have a ballroom, you have a caterer, you have production, you have flowers, invitations, all of those things. You're spending money on that. You might as well spend money and invest money into someone that's actually on the stage that's there to make your money. All of those other expenditures are taking money out of your bank account. Fundraising auctioneers that are experienced and are knowledgeable help you put money back in and sometimes a lot more money back in than what your event is. Now, uh, if we keep looking here as auctioneer in the budget. Auctioneers will help you raise more money. Thank you, Shannon. Uh, unless one of them has a personal relationship with, um, they need to stay in their lane. Yes, they need to stay in their lane. This is not your lane, board members. Uh, good luck finding a pro bono auctioneer. Yeah, there's pro bono auctioneers out there all the time. I can introduce you to them. No, I won't because they specialize in different classes of assets, real estate, artwork, general consignment, automobiles, whatever it is, they specialize in that industry. Fundraising auctioneers, benefit auction specialists, we specialize and focus on fundraising events. Myself and my wife, Erin, we are 100% fundraising. That's how we make our living. We eat, sleep, breathe, and talk extensively about fundraising and are constantly pushing the envelope and, and really setting that razor uh, edge of what is possible within a paddle race and with an auction. Uh, so we're going to keep going down here through there. Uh, we pay our auctioneers. We want the best, and they should be compensated for their time and their experience, uh, not their domain. Um, this is your lane as the executive director. They're nuts. Where do they think an auctioneer gets his business from? Birthday parties? I don't do birthday parties. 95% uh, of them comes from nonprofits. Yeah, in our case, 100%. Uh, circle back, have the conversation. Maybe there's a history, something, yada, 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 yada. And and that's, that's a lot of the misconception that board members are bringing to the table is that misconception because they've been at events and it's it's mind-blowing to me that people are going to all of these events and they're seeing the cringe auctioneer or a friend of mine had had coined it as the functioneer like f-a-u-x faux auctioneer they're not really auctioneers and many people have been to these events because nonprofits are scared to invest in that and because the, the fear of investing in a fundraising auctioneer is there, then they don't actually get to see a real fundraising auctioneer, someone that's experienced, someone that can engage with the crowd, get them laughing, get them crying. Most importantly, motivate them to take action, to truly take action and then say thank you at the same time. And if someone isn't doing that, like, Obviously, your board members have been affected by that if that's the case. Well, friends, it's time to turn the tide. Time to change the conversation Make your events better. So I've attended uh, fundraising events that use uh, uh, volunteer auctioneers for free. They're late. Yeah, what's the buy-in for that auctioneer? Uh, tell bad jokes. Uh, 
you know, have some varying degrees of sobriety. I mean, like, look, this is our day job. Um, we're on the clock when we're there. You don't see us drinking at your event. There's no need for that. That's that's where we clock in. That's where we go to work. That's where we help you raise the money. Um, if we go home and we're going to have a beverage of whatever type it is, that's our time, not your time, because we're there. We're, we're there working for you. Uh, event budget again. Good luck finding the free one. We used to do ourselves and then invest in an auction and made more money. It's a good investment. Thank you, Justine. Uh, it's an operational decision, not a board decision. Absolutely right. Uh, is there a board gala chair committee with a budget? It's not. It's your call. Uh, see nothing wrong with trying to secure an in-kind donation. Yes, it doesn't hurt to ask. I do do in-kind events too. Two a year are pro bono events that are very near and dear to my heart. Uh, I work with lots of organizations and these two particular organizations like really, really hit home and they are my, 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 my pet projects. So there might be a pro bono auctioneer that's out there, but make sure that their experience and their pro bono uh, for a reason. Now, there are some opportunities uh, that you could identify a corporate sponsor to sponsor that auctioneer, auctioneer sponsored by XYZ Corporation, whatever it might be. Uh, there's other ways that you can underwrite that fee. Uh, sometimes an auctioneer will bring in a revenue generator. Sometimes an auctioneer will bring in an auction item. Uh, there's lots of different ways uh, to invest in an auctioneer that aren't going to cost you any money. It doesn't cost to hire an auctioneer. It pays. Uh, let's see here. You get what you pay for without an experienced auction auctioneer. You're leaving money on the table. I've followed up professional auctioneers that had already left money on the table. And then now it's my job to get that money back. And even then some, uh, the value of a good auctioneer can be, can be quantified. Uh, it is worth the dollars spent almost always and not just anyone can do what they do. Uh, that's right. What we do as professional fundraising auctioneers, MCs, hosts, and consultants, there's maybe just a few hundred of us in the entire world that make a living at this. Uh, 1.5 million nonprofits in the United States. You do the math. If there's only a few hundred that are out there that are doing it at the highest level, there's definitely a big supply and demand shortage, that, shortage that's out there. Uh, I'm also proud to be able to coach and mentor future fundraising auctioneers. So if you're looking for someone that might not have the highest of budgets, or you're looking for someone that might not be at the highest investment level of uh, finding a junior auctioneer that is under the mentorship of someone that has 20 plus years of experience, knows that you're going to get set up for success, but then you're also going to have a great trained auctioneer that's with that. Uh, determination, uh, determining organization's tone with your board roles. Yes, they're overstepping. Uh, I would always get the attempt to get the services donated, but it's not always possible. Um, again, you get what you pay for. Uh, do they want a skilled auctioneer or a free auctioneer? <laughs> this is really, yeah. I mean, you can, you can have, you can have cheap, good, or fast, but you only get to pick two. You can have cheap and fast, you can have, have good and fast, or you can have good and cheap, but they really don't exist. So you've got to figure out, you know, what's more important, saving money or raising more money. A lot of times your impact isn't able to grow unless you raise more and more money. And then my best friend, Didi Kisau is up there. She says, my background is in radio and TV. So I thought I was an auctioneer like most of us do. If I could go back and undo the auctions when I was asking for the money and didn't know what the heck I was doing except sounding awesome on the microphone, she would. Yes, going back and changing that. Now, I've seen Dee Dee grow up, not really grow up, but grow uh, in the fundraising auctioneer industry. I remember at a workshop where we met and she said, that's it. I'm going to be an auctioneer. And now she's one of the best in the nation. Uh, attending auction school combined with my 30 years of nonprofit business and what I learned as a professional auctioneer. Now I can tell you I raise about $10 million a year for clients. Very similar in us. Uh, Dee Dee's up in the uh, Northern California area. Reach out to her freaking awesome i went to an auction with a dj personality it was awful what do you want your guests to be saying at the end of the night that was awful that was cringe i'm never coming back again is that what you want them saying why would you take that risk well friends you don't have to you can mitigate that risk you can hire a professional just like your catering would you trust your catering to a short order cook at the deli no, you wouldn't. You want your guests to have a great food and dining experience. So that's why you spend $35, $45, $85 a plate. 
or more to make sure that you're getting that great service and you're getting that great food. Um, sure, you could get a venue donated, but it's probably going to be 10 by 10 and you're only going to fit like 25 people in there. But if you have an event with 300, 400 people, 500 people, you need a big ballroom. That's going to cost money. You need lights, you need sound, you need all of those things. And you want your audience, your guests, your donors to walk away and be like, wow, what a beautiful night. I learned so much more about the organization. I feel this much more connected and I can't wait to write him a check. Big, big, big difference in awful to amazing. I like that. We're going to use that some more. Awful to amazing. Uh, oh my gosh, Nora, I love you. Nonprofits should refrain from the scarcity mindset and start operating in a professional way as it is a business. Amen, sister. That makes me so happy to hear that. That's why I kind of started off this whole rant with that is there should be policies in place in the ED and their operational team should make decisions based on that and see fit. Yes, abundance mindset. There is more than enough money out there for you all to fulfill the missions that you have. You just got to go get it and you got to be smart about it. Uh, do board members sit on event committee for this event? Auctioneer in the budget. You can't find what the, 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 sounds like a committee decision to me. I would nicely thank each and every board for their advice. Let the consultation many uh, CEOs have run across. The decision to hire evidence shows a paid auctioneer will make more money for the organization because of their skill and expertise. Skill, expertise, knowledge, all of that. We know things that so many people don't in the world. Uh, your decisions, always good advice, operational issue, budget matters. Uh, at the end of the event, the board members are on the GALA committee. They can make suggestions. The board's in place to counsel many other these. Um, I agree that you're correct. Professional auctioneers, clients are primarily not profit, so anyone decent at their job is not going to donate. I would love to donate to every organization that I work for, and some of the organizations we actually do make a gift at their event. However, I've got a family to feed. I have a roof over my head, I made the choice instead of going into commercial auctions, real estate auctions, I was an auto auctioneer, didn't give me the warm and fuzzies, but working for nonprofits, that does. That's my passion. That's my purpose in life. This is why I am on this earth to help nonprofits like yours raise money, to help other nonprofit fundraising professionals, MCs, hosts, auctioneers, to be better performers, to be better consultants, to provide better value for you, the nonprofits um, that are the, out there. Uh, your responsibilities manage donor donations well. Guy, do you make organizational policies and procedures? This doesn't feel like a board decision. Yes, this is your division. I did an event about a year ago. Okay, Adina. I met out a year ago and hired an auctioneer. I would say that if you have some really good auction items, it will make 10 times more or above if you've had not hired an auctioneer. But if you have good stuff to begin with, with a high net worth audience, I don't think that is what you're asking. But to keep in mind, if you don't do well on the auction, you go against the recommendation, it could make things more difficult for going forward. So make sure you're doing going to get a good result. That's right. Mitigating the risk. That is such a key component. Mitigate the risk. And then Vicki Franklin, I'm not sure if I'm friends with Vicki yet. Um, the auctioneer world is very, very small. However, Vicki says, I'm an auctioneer, but will work with you on fees for a nonprofit unless you can find a celebrity host or someone very witty to call your auction. You may not make as much money as an experienced auctioneer calling for you. Now, a lot of times auctioneers say that they're going to call auctions, which, you know, it comes from the old adage of the auctioneer chant, where it is the bid call. Uh, this is kind of a red flag for me, because fundraising auctioneers and MCs and consultants are totally different than just a regular auctioneer that's there to call the sale. We're there as philanthropic partners with you to help you understand the process of event fundraising and to help you maximize all the different areas of revenue that are within there and to create as best experience as possible. I'm not just there to call an auction. Yes, I like to do the chant, 25 out of 35, 45, 55,000, 65. I love to do that. However, that's like 1% of the time that I spend with the, my nonprofit clients to be able to help them raise as much money as possible. Vicky. If you're seeing this, reach out to me. I think we should talk. We can have a conversation and I can help you showcase more value to be able to help more nonprofits out there in the world. And my nonprofit friends that are with me, guess what? Guess what? I have a special resource for you. And all you have to do is click the link below and you can get this. This right here, my friends, is the how to hire the perfect fundraising auctioneer for your next event checklist. And right in here, we've got so many different things. You got to look for professionalism, who presents themselves professionally, communication skills. An auctioneer should have wonderful communication skills and not say, um, and, uh, and they need to speak clearly. 
articulately, confidently, engage with the audience, create a sense of urgency and excitement, and get people to raise their paddles. That's what it's all about. Salesmanship, storytelling, you have to really, really speak the mission, really speak those stories that are out there and really showcase the impact that it's having. And, and, and to be able to, again, fulfill your mission. Adaptability. This is very, very important. There are so many different types of auctioneers that are out there. Now, I'm not going to fit every organization. That's why I have a very diverse team. Men, women, men of color, women of color, people of color. We've got all different types of auctioneers that are out there. And if you're looking for someone for a particular particular demographic, guess what? There's one that exists out there. They're in my network. I can help you find them. And there's some great auctioneers. That, did you know that there are ASL auctioneers that are out there, American Sign Language auctioneers. That's right. Oh, I'll put the link in below. You can see that, how that happens. It's crazy. Their hands are on fire. Um, experience. Look for an auctioneer who has experience in the type of event, the nonprofit sector. Yes, just because they're an auctioneer does not mean that they specialize in fundraising. Sometimes they do and other things. Sometimes this is all they do. Experience. That's what you get to find. Investment. Compare the costs and fees of different auctioneers to ensure that you're getting the maximum value. Now there are fees from all over the place, from a dollar up to... 10, 20, $30,000, but it's all about that ROI. If you're having a $3 million event, are you going to hire a $500 auctioneer? I hope not because you have $3 million at stake and it's really easy to lose a quick 50, 100, 150, $200,000 if that particular auctioneer is cringe. That's what the kids are saying these days, cringe. Reviews, check references and reviews from past clients. If you want to call my client list, I am more than happy to do that. I will hand it over and you can talk to anyone that's on that list and ask how it is by working with Bobby D and the Inspire Hearts call to auction and Star Benefit Auction teams. And you'll learn directly from the client's mouth of what it is like to work with us, the type of energy and the excitement that we're able to build, the feedback that their board members, their very board members that said not to hire me, but then hired me was and said that was the best decision that they'd ever made. So it's that feedback. It's that referral network that's that's there. Uh, if you're also looking for some referrals, maybe uh, you're in a sector of the market and are having a hard time finding a consummate professional fundraising auctioneer, MC host consultant, please reach out. I've got a giant network and we can find some to be able to work with you. Even if you're in a market that might not have one, guess what? They make these things called airplanes and automobiles that we can fly to you. I flew coast to coast seven times this past fundraising season. New York, California, New York, Scottsdale, New York, Chicago, New York, St. Louis, New York, Texas, all over the place. It's, it's how it works. Airplanes. And you got to get that right person with the right energy, the right excitement, the right inspiration and motivation for you to get your guests to take action and to raise that paddle. I love paddles. Look at paddle. Here it is. Paddle. Yes, yes, yes. Right here. This is going to make you all the money. All right. Here's a quick tip. If you don't think you can afford an auctioneer, why not sell the back of your paddle for $5,000 or $10,000 and get an underwriter for your auctioneer? And now it doesn't cost you anything. Look at that. Look at that, my friends. I think I helped you provide some value. I think I might have helped clarify this question that had came up on the Your Thriving Nonprofit Facebook group. Well, the Your Thriving Nonprofit Facebook group, thank you for watching this. If there's any other questions about hiring an auctioneer, et cetera, et cetera, please reach out. Happy to be a resource. Happy to be able to help you any way that I can. That's what I'm in the business for. I am passionate about helping you to fulfill your mission, make an impact in the world any way that I can. And even listening to this, I hope I'm making an impact. But yes, the link below for this checklist to make sure that you are going to be hiring the perfect fundraising auctioneer for your next event. Thanks for spending a few moments with me and letting me rant a little bit uh, because, yeah, I got to get out of my system sometimes. And it's way easier to make a video than to type all of these words. Yeah, this is not AI generated from the mouth of a fundraising auctioneer to your ears. Well, friends, thank you so much again for spending some time with me today. And then there's one question I want to ask you. When you're trying to make ripples across the pond, are you going to throw a pebble? Or are you going to throw a boulder? Throw a boulder. Be big. Be bold. Be awesome. Make big waves that are going to make an impact. You can do it. Thank you all for being in the nonprofit sector and truly changing the world. It's you are the ones that are making that true impact. And let's do it together. All right. Thanks again. Bobby D with Inspire Hearts Fundraising Call to Auction, Star Benefit Auctions, and 
Heart of the Gala podcast. Make sure you tune in. Um, there's a ton of episodes. Click the link below. Like, follow, subscribe, all the things. Thank you so much. Love you. Have a great day. And we'll see you on the next show. Bye, everyone. Click the link to download. Have a great one. Bye. Bye.